So let's say hello to tonight's guests. It's presenter Ben Fogel and actor Joanne Froggett. Welcome to both of you. Ben, I want to come to you first because you've been very open recently and generally about your own mental health. And I know you're a big fan of the idea that we just saw in the film. Real men wear pink jumpers and talk about their mental health. That's, that's kind of my attitude. I think there's, there's a problem, particularly for men, but it is obviously for women as well, where people still find it difficult to talk mm. about their mental health. And I've had my own little struggles over the years, and I think I'm very open about every other part of my life, so why would I not be honest about that? Yeah, brilliant. And Joanne, mental health is obviously a big subject in your new drama. It's a COVID drama called Breathtaking. It starts tonight. It's absolutely tremendous. We can't wait to talk to you it's, about it, can it's we? It's so great. Um, let's have a look before we chat about it. I'm not going to make it home this weekend. Sorry, it's just it's madness. There's currently no PPE at all. They were overwhelmed. The virus is always going to be ahead. Trust the guidelines. This is insane. Where's the defense? Where's the cash flowing? The public can be assured that we have a clear plan. There's no plan. Members of our team are wearing bin bags and going home wondering if they're going to die in the night. Don't go there. We're already there. You know this thing is spreading. They just keep coming. But no one is giving up. Prepare for the worst. But hope for the best. I mean, so unbelievably mm. powerful. As Al said, we've we've had the chance to see it early. We were absolutely gripped, but the reaction already coming in and, and from our viewers too. Uh, Becky says, I worked on the front line in the NHS and I've seen a clip of the show already. It made me cry. So just from what's out there so far. So as we just heard, the series follows healthcare workers during the height of the pandemic. So you play Dr. Abby. Tell us a little bit about her and what she's up against. Yes, so I play Dr. Abby Henderson and she's a fictionalised character and we've based our hospital on a London hospital but the hospital is fictionalised in our show as well and that's basically so we could incorporate different people's experiences into one but my character is based on the experiences of Dr Rachel Clark who wrote a memoir called mm -hmm. Breathtaking um, and this is obviously a retelling of that and an expansion of that story and the story of her colleagues during the height of the pandemic. And are we right to think then that, you know, all the scenes, the scenarios then that come up are based on real life events? Yes, so with this is very much a retelling of the truth and it's very much the story we don't know. If you were fortunate enough, as I was, not to have dealings with mm. hospitals during the pandemic, during the height of the pandemic, you know, so many of us were, were unaware of the extent of what our NHS workers went through and our healthcare workers went through, the risks they were put under, um, their physical health and their mental health. And this is the story that we don't know. So yeah. every single part of our story, every patient story, every staff story is based on truth. It's a retelling of something that happened. They didn't all happen in the same hospital, but they happened somewhere in the UK during the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, we think we know, but this shines a whole new light on it. But for you, such an important role and such an important story to tell. How did you go about researching it then? Yeah, it was obviously a huge responsibility and as it should be. So, I spent a lot of time with Rachel, uh, asked her about a million questions. Uh, I read Rachel's book, Breathtaking, obviously, and her previous book, Dear Life. We also had two incredible medical advisors on our set called Tom Petty and Andrew Cinnamon, who led us through a medical boot camp, very intensive few days, um, and, and sort of imparted as much knowledge as possible onto us. But they were also on set 24 seven, and they'd worked on the front line during the height of the pandemic. Mm. So they were also able to tell us their experiences from an emotional side as well. So to be able to ask them, how did this feel? You know, how did it feel when you felt when the first patient came in? How did you feel when the PPE was downgraded? You know, what what did, what was this experience like for you? So uh, they were, you know, integral to our performances. Incredible to have them mm. on set, but then having created this drama, you actually had a screening with NHS workers as the audience. That must have been incredibly emotional. It was very emotional and nerve-wracking for an actor as well because you're kind of going, was I believable, was it OK? Um, but, yeah, no, it was an incredibly profound evening, actually, and I was able to speak to quite a few people afterwards. We had about 100 NHS professionals in the audience. It was very um, triggering for a lot of them. And, um, you know, 
all round, everybody was of the opinion that it was very authentic and it, and it mm -hmm. did represent mm. their story and what happened to them. But I spoke to an ITU nurse who said she felt like she was going to die every day. And, you know, I spoke to, I spoke to a pandemic, who's, a, a paramedic, sorry, who said, you know, there were times she couldn't take patients into hospital because she had nowhere to take them and she knew that they had they should be in hospital. Ugh. And that trauma is living living with these people. It's not gonna go away. So yeah, yeah it's been a, a really profound experience getting to play Abby actually. And it and it will be for uh, that experience for, for many people watching. Ben, I think I'm right in thinking you had friends and family working on the front line. Lots of doctors in, in my family and uh, my cousin, uh, Dr. Oliver Adams. Hey Ollie. Uh, he he was frontline NHS doctor for the duration, you know, he, he put his life on the line like so many doctors and nurses and selfless people out there who, who really, Gosh. you know, put, put their lives on the line. Yeah, well, it's really good that we know. The drama helps us understand exactly what they did, whereas I don't think we did before. It really brings it home. I think we've got yeah. so much to be grateful for and it, it feels like watching their story on screen, it's going to be incredibly powerful. Oh, it is, yes. Gosh, brace yourself. Thank you, Joanne. Breathtaking starts tonight, 9pm on ITV1. Still to come, Ben tells us why his latest adventure into the Congo was one of his toughest yet. But <laughs> This is such a gorgeous watch, this programme. And as you can see from that clip, you're just in your element. The first episode went out last night. You had a fantastic time, but you did have a near miss with a venomous snake. We were, I went out with the uh, the Vangeli, um, who I was staying with, and they fish by making little dams in these very tiny streams. And the fish that they catch are tiny, they're like an inch long. And I mistook a very small steak, a very small snake for one of the fish. And they oh. all warned me if I had been bitten, that would have been it. You know, that it was a, a deadly snake. The end of Fogel. Well, that could have been the end, of, the end of me, I know. Strange Shambles. way to go. Now, you say about fishing in small little streams, but in an upcoming episode, you go with these fishermen who are doing this sort of extreme fishing in these rapids. It's incredible, isn't it? The, the mighty Congo River, one of the biggest con uh, rivers in the world, has these huge rapids, impassable. Mm. And these fishermen uh, have, for many, many years, gone into the river. They set the net, so they actually have to dive under. They're, they're, if they get washed away, swept away, that's it. They're, they're, there's absolutely no way they could survive. And they're forced to do it because there is very little um, opportunity in, in the Congo. And obviously with climate change uh, that is affecting uh, so many regions around the world, mm -hmm. There are less and less fish. They're forced to push even harder, even further, and the returns are, are minimal. So it's, it's, a, it's a reality check of how tough life is. Um, we're not kind of looking at it through rose-tinted rose glasses. It's, it's hard out there. Mm. But I think what's beautiful about this series is that we get to see all sides of the Congo, from the, the fishermen, uh, the, the Benjele, through to the sapeurs. These are modern day sort of dandies and they wear three piece suits and they parade with pipes and umbrellas and they are just so wonderful. They parade like they're on a catwalk and everyone watches and they show off the fashion. Uh, and, and for me, I just thought it was part of the charm of the Congo and I really was charmed yeah. by the whole thing. I was really profoundly moved by it and made, made friends for life. Wow. The thing is, you have got so many stories, which is handy, because you're off on tour. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I, I'm taken to the stage. I can, my, my mother's an actress, Julia Foster, and I always wanted to be an actor, but got rejected by all the drama schools. So I'm finally itching that. Look at you that. now. Who's laughing I'm now, I'm finally ben? itching that scratch. So I'm actually going... Uh, one of the venues is actually the Lyric on Shaftesbury Avenue in, in, uh, in London, which is where my mother... Uh, first met my father. She invited him oh. on a date. He, he was her vet and she was in quite a raunchy show, I think. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to know any of that because it's mum. And they fell in love and married and had me. So it's actually quite poignant to be going there. But I'm going all around the UK and I'm bringing all these stories to life, taking people behind the scenes of new lives in the wild, all the shows I've been doing over the years and hopefully bringing a little bit of wild and a little bit of hope to people and talking very honestly about mental health and, and the struggles we all have, whoever we are. Yeah. And, I mean, people will want to know, what is the biggest sort of pinch-me moment of your career, which is always hard to pinpoint, isn't it? it, but... it I mean, that really is hard, but I think... When I, when I finally summited Everest, when I stood on the top of the highest mountain in the world, for me, who was 
bit of a failure at school, who was hopeless at sport. I was one of the dweebs, you know, what wasn't very sure of myself. To finally reach that point that I dreamed of all my life really was a moment I will never, ever, ever forget. It was amazing. Joanne, I think you've got a, a, an adventurous traveller inside you as well, a little bit like Ben. Is there a particular place that you would love to visit above all else? Um, I am a bit of an, an adventurer and a traveller. I do, um, I would love to see more of Africa. I've been to Tanzania um, and been to Makumi Wildlife Park, but I would love to see more of Africa. I'd love to, I love, you know, to go on a safari and, you know, see the wildlife in different parts of Africa. Mm. Incredible. Somebody will be watching this. You'll be on a travel documentary. There we go. You <laughs> I'm pitching myself out there. It's <laughs> like, I know my way around. Where yeah, do you want to go? Let's great, make great. it happen. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Ben. Into the Congo with Ben Fogel continues Sunday at 9 pm on Channel 5, and you can catch episode one on My Five. Now then, if you were watching the telly on Saturday night, you may have spotted that we played a little part in Michael McIntyre's big show as we helped Michael and his team spring a lovely surprise on one show superfan, Robert. Yes, we made a special edition of the show and played it into his home without him knowing. We had his old classmate, James Nesbitt, talking about a new BBC drama inspired by Robert's life. Matt Allwright had a watchdog story about his kettle and Jermaine was even sat wearing some of his clothes. In <laughs> case Jacket. <laughs> if you missed it, here is what happened. <laughs> Hello there, and welcome to the One Show live on BBC One. And I. And there's your the actual coach. coach. Alex Jones. Now it's not a Wednesday. Not that you it's noticed. <laughs> it's centred around uh, the character I play called Richard Neville, who is a local dairy farmer. What? <laughs> Richard Neville. <laughs> An urgent product recall that may be affecting you and your family. Too. We've got one! This is uh, all for you. Robert. 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 I want the young one too! Uh, it all worked like an absolute dream. And around this time of night, Robert is normally watching the show from County Antrim, as we heard there. So we thought we'd give him and his son, Peter, front row seats tonight, and we've made them feel at home, hopefully. Come on over, both. Come and, come and sit yourselves on the proper sofa. Come on. <laughs> oh, you got oh. your jacket back. Look. The jacket's Robert, been returned, Robert. I said. Yeah, the jacket's <laughs> made a return. Do you know what? It was such a pleasure to, to sort of be part of that surprise for you because your reaction was so lovely. Could you believe it? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was incredible. We watch things and it, it's never on your mind that this, this is going to... You know, Michael's going to come in the door. It's not an option, so... <laughs> You know, speechless. What's the reaction been then from like family and friends who saw it Saturday? Well, uh, you know, amazed, can't believe it. You know, uh, emails gone mad, sort of WhatsApp's gone mad. You know, Peter, you were right. And yeah, like where we're from, Port Rush, it's quite a small town. Northern Ireland as a whole is pretty small, but when things like this happen, so many people hear about it and word spreads pretty fast. So yeah, we've got a lot of messages coming in and he's a bit of a celebrity around the Port Rush town. <laughs> yeah. so you, you, you had a special viewing party. How did it go? Uh, yeah, well, we had loads of friends, loads of dad's friends <laughs> around. And then um, I went out in Port Rush later that night and I had random people approaching me. Um, so yeah, it just shows how, how popular and well received it was by everyone. Oh, well, as Peter says, you've become a bit of a celebrity <laughs> in Portrush and you've put Jimmy Nesbitt's nose right out of joint. Here's a message for you. I am really in a state of shock that you are now on the one show and I'm not. You are actually bigger than Jimmy Nesbitt. How did this happen? You're welcome. <laughs> Oh. Bigger than Nesbitt, love it. Very good. He was so brilliant, wasn't he? We're going he? to have fantastic. to meet up and have a proper chat. Yes, that's amazing. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe you're on the one show. It's brilliant. Um, thank you so much, both of you. And if you missed Michael McIntyre's big show, you can catch it on BBC iPlayer. So many gorgeous messages have come in on iPad. Uh, this one is from Chris, who says, watched the first episode of Into the Congo last night and said, what a truly amazing programme, Ben. Oh, thank you. And uh, Cecilia says, I want to thank you for giving an insight into how we fought COVID-19 in the NHS. This made me cry. 
So many more people are going to be crying this evening when they watch it. Thank you so much. Unmissable. Um, that is all we've got time for tonight. Thanks so much to Ben, Joanne, Robert and Peter, of Thank course. Thank you, guys. I'll be back tomorrow alongside Ronan. We'll be joined by comedian Rosie Jones, singer Michael Ball and classical music superstar Lang Lang. Have a fantastic night. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.